Are you ready? I am muted now. Okay. Who let the fox out? Who let the fox out? This story that I wish to tell you is one of the first versions of another story that was changed by the brothers Grimm. This is the story of Scrapefoot the Fox. Scrapefoot lived in the woods. He was a very proud fox. He would groom himself daily and always hope that his tail would be fluffy and lovely. But Scrapefoot always wondered about who lived in the great gray castle. One morning, Scrapefoot, he got up and he came out of his little den and he looked to the left and to the right. He set out to the great gray castle. He skittered here and he skittered there. And he finally arrived, and the great gray castle looked foreboding. He looked up to the turrets, and he saw the windows, but in front of him was the door. Now, every other time he had been at the castle, the door was closed and shut tight. So carefully and gingerly, he put his little paws onto the door and discovered that it opened. <gasps> the door opens. Oh, will it be my lucky day? Do I get to go inside of the great gray castle at last? Scrapefoot pushed the door and entered. And he was in a room, a room that was made of wood panels. A great fireplace of stone had fire crackling in it and a long wooden table with three chairs was there. He looked at the long wooden table and saw bowls of hot stew. It smelled so divine on his snout. He wondered, ah, where are the occupants? How could they have left this delicious bowls of stew? He went to the first grand bowl and licked it. <laughs> Too salty. Then he went to the next Midland-sized bowl. Ooh, too cool. And he went to the tiny weevil and he looked at, oh, this is the best stew I've ever had. Oh. And being a bit ill-mannered, he then tossed the bowl off into the room and it rolled clankety clank upon the floorboards. <sighs> I had some stew. What else could I possibly do? He entered into another room that had red brocade curtains. And he saw a throne. And the throne had red satin cushions. And it was a grand throne and a midland sized throne and a wee tiny throne. He wondered again, who lives here? Who lives in this great gray castle? But he sat upon the grand throne. Oh, oh. It hurts my bones. Then he sat on the Midland throne. Oh, and the cushion swallowed him. And he had to work his way out. Oh. But he sat upon the wee tiny throne and found it quite comfortable. He shifted this way and that way and this way and that way. But it fell to the side with Scrapefoot falling, and it crumbled into pieces. Huh? What have I done? Oh, this is great work eating and sitting in thrones. I must find a place to rest my weary fox body. 
Scrapefoot ascended this grand stairwell. It was circular up to the next floor. And on entering the next chamber, he found a large grand bed and a midland sized bed and a wee tiny bed. He went into the grand bed and lay down, but alas, he couldn't sleep because it was too hard. I can't sleep, it'll hurt me. Huh, who could live here and have such a hard bed? He then went to the midland sized bed. And when he lay down, he was swallowed by a sinking mattress in the middle. Oh, will I ever get out? And he moved his paws this way and that way until he leaped from the middle in bed. He went to the wee tiny bed. Hmm, I might have to make myself small to be here. And he laid upon the pillow and stretched out and fell fast asleep. <laughs> About that time, when he was deep within a dream, the door to the great gray castle opened wide, and it was none other than the black bear family that lived in that forest and lived at the great gray castle. The grandest bear of all, the father bear, sniffed. I believe I smell a fox. And the midland sized bear said, well, dear, we might have a midland sized fox but we're going to go and enjoy the stew I set out. And the wee tiny little black bear said, I want my stew, please, can we eat? They went into the dining room with the stone fireplace there. And the grand bear said, oh, someone, someone has licked my stew. And the Midland bear said, ah, oh, dear, someone has done mine as well. And the wee tiny black bear said, I don't know where mine is. And he looked and found his bowl on the floor empty. Papa, Mama, look, it's empty. I have no food. I'll get you more myself. I'll get you more. They went into the next chamber where the thrones were. And immediately the grand bear said, ah, I can see by my cushions that something is there and even left some fur upon my cushions. And the Midland bear said, ah, my cushions, look at them. They're all squished and yes, there's fur upon mine as well. Something's been shedding. But look, look at mine. <laughs> it's broken. <laughs> I'll never have it again. <laughs> ah, there, there, my dearest little bear. We've had a rough morning. I suggest that we go upstairs and rest. When we come down, I will make some fresh food and bake a cake as well, and perhaps the intruder will have gone and will never see who did this. They carefully ascended the staircase and came to the bedchamber. I see that someone's been in my bed as well and messed up all the covers. Ah, oh dear, yes, someone's been in mine. The cushions are all a wreck. And the little black bear said, look, look who came into our house. It, it's none other than Scrapefoot the Fox. Scrapefoot was deep into sleep when the bears grabbed him by the paws and they went backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards and tossed him out 
of the window and scraped foot landed with a thud. He looked up at the window, looked at the great gray castle and realized it was the black bears who lived there. And as quick as if lightning had struck him, he bounded off through the forest and back to his den. And he never chose to enter the great gray castle again. Thank you. Thank you for this magical um, uh, uh, shaped uh, a Goldie Fox story. It is uh, <laughs> amazing. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. And and then uh, we almost uh, go to the last um, um, uh, friend of the Kaylee for this week. And that's our own Evelyn Kabanban. Um, after that, uh, I, I have some songs for you uh, because, well, that's another story. I, I am allowed to I'm invited to play some music and tell some stories for an Alzheimer cafe next week. And I'm there more often. And I had really elder people songs. And now people say, hey, have you got anything from the Rolling Stones? And I hadn't. So I have been practicing. Uh, so I will come up with that a little later. But first, let's go. Are you ready? Strap yourself so we can go all the way to the Filipinas. Or um, for some of us, it will be, uh, or, or some others, it, it might even be. Uh, um, anyway, Evelyn, uh, you. would you like your poem to be recorded? Yes, 